in this section will begin with building true confidence and self-esteem and why that's important and necessary for holistic menstrual care. Then we'll move on to living in sync with your cycle. What does it mean and how you can do it? And then in part three, you will learn how to love your period and understand why your period feels the way you feel about your period. And finally, in part four, we will be creating your holistic menstrual care routine. What does that include and where will you begin? Now that you have that brief overview of where we will be going, let's begin. This is session one, building true confidence and self-esteem. A holistic menstrual care routine must consider the whole of the menstrual cycle, not just the bleeding period at that time of the month. In particular, it considers how menstruation relates to the reproductive cycle in general, as well as your personal reproductive life cycle from monarchy to where you are now and beyond. You are always welcome, but never obligated to discuss medical concerns or updates with your mentor who can and should provide you information about or direct you to seek medical resources should you need it. A menstrual mentor is there to support you with your period related concerns. Even if you just want to rant about period cramps or the cost of period products or hot flashes, if you're dealing with menopause or perimenopause, you should always feel free to express yourself with your mentor. A menstrual mentor should help you to gain more knowledge about your period, about how menstruation works and how you can best manage and even master your menses. By the end of this series, you will understand how and why mastering your period will empower you to realize who you are and who you are meant to be, and also to create whatever it is you want in life. This is session number two, living in sync with your cycle. So rather than letting outside forces dictate your life, you're listening to what your body is telling you and then making choices or taking actions that are in alignment with you and your needs. Of course, there will be times when you can't always get what you want or you can't always do the things that you want to do when you want to do them. So it will be important to also know how to react or to respond depending on what phase you're in. As we go through the presentation, you'll see how sometimes your hormone levels will keep you in control and other times you'll need to make a conscious effort to maintain your composure, particularly when certain hormones are low. The linear view of menstruation is what caused the most confusion for me when it came to understanding my cycle. It didn't occur to me that many processes were happening all at the same time. I, like most women, believe that each phase happened one after the other. And so once I had a better understanding of how the phases overlap, the process became clearer. For that reason, I've included a few graphs and charts in this presentation for your reference in case you need a quick reminder of what may be occurring at a particular point in the cycle. Estrogen gradually rises during this phase. An increase in estrogen means an increase in overall energy and mood. A decrease in estrogen at the end of this phase will naturally have the opposite effect. This is the ideal time for starting new projects, for making big decisions, finalizing contracts, and executing plans, etc. When the producer produces a mature ovum, it releases it. Estrogen falls back to allow her partner, progesterone, to rise up. And progesterone is a steroid hormone. And the main purpose of a steroid is to control. So it controls muscles, water balance, pain and illness, immunity, metabolism, inflammation, etc.
the womb first has to get a message from the ovaries letting it know whether or not it should continue preparing for an egg or whether or not it should stop. Estrogens are low, progesterone is low, and what's called the corpus luteum disintegrates and forms a scar tissue on the ovaries. This is session number three, learning to love your period. Menstruation is a natural bodily function. It is not a disease. Despite this fact, we continue to use terminology that reinforces the idea that menstruation is a disease that presents with so-called symptoms. You may have heard it said before that since we spell words, every word that you speak casts a spell. And using this type of language has the effect of casting a spell that indoctrinates you into believing that menstruation is a disease. So starting today, we're going to change that perspective by first changing the language. When we talk about a syndrome, we're talking about, according to dictionary.com, a group of symptoms which consistently occur together or a condition characterized by a set of associated symptoms. So we're gonna go from the PMS to the PMI, the premenstrual indicator or indicators. All right, so let's talk about your period. When we talk about holistic menstrual care, an important part of our holistic menstrual care is understanding how we develop our mindset around menstruation. Where did it come from? So it's important to talk about your first cycle. And if you don't want to talk about it, it's important to at least think about it, meditate on it, remember it and try to figure out what is it about that one experience that set the tone for all the others. Understanding how your first experience with menstruation set the tone for all other periods to follow. How to start loving your period. Now talking about your period is going to get you to love your period. So first think of your first period, and then you'll think of or imagine the positives about that period. And then we're going to rewrite or retell your story because your story might be a great period. So not everyone had a negative experience. So if it's just remembering the experience and then retelling the experience, that will help to reinforce positive feelings around it. Now, whether you had a negative experience or a positive experience, I want you to imagine the positive. Imagine what your monarchy or your first period would look like if you could change that one negative aspect into the positive aspect that you envision now. This is session number four, creating your holistic menstrual care routine. So what is holistic menstrual care? Holistic menstrual care is almost always confused with naturopathy. Women will use natural remedies to treat the symptoms of so-called PMS or menstrual cramps, and they'll call that holistic menstrual care. But a menstrual care routine, no matter how natural or non-toxic or organic it may be, cannot be considered holistic if you're only treating what you've been told are symptoms of a condition called menstruation during the menstrual or the premenstrual period. A truly holistic menstrual care routine must consider the whole, the whole of the cycle and the whole of the person. 
So let's look at the origins of the word holism, and then we'll look at the concept of holism. Because the concept surely existed long before the term was coined, since holism is a way of life that was followed by ancient peoples long before modern languages even existed. So the way I see it, holistic menstrual care is more than just using natural remedies to manage your period or to manage premenstrual syndrome. It's about understanding menstruation in general and understanding your own individual cycle. It considers your entire menstrual life cycle from beginning to end, from menarche to menopause and even beyond that. Holistic menstrual care operates on the principle that the more you know about yourself as a whole, the better you'll be able to manage that aspect or that part of the whole, that part of who you are. And because a holistic menstrual care routine must be tailored to meet the needs of an individual, no two people will ever have the same routine. So where should you begin when it comes to creating your own holistic menstrual care routine. Know yourself, know your needs. When it comes to meeting new people and inviting new people into our lives, we take the time to get to know them. We ask them questions about who they are, what their interests are, what their life is like. And sometimes we believe that we know ourselves just as much as we know the people around us. That we know ourselves better than we know the people around us. But have you ever really asked yourself questions about yourself? And do you know the answers to those questions? You'd be surprised to know that a lot of people do not know themselves as well as they say they do or believe they do. They've never asked themselves tough questions. They've never really looked in the mirror while answering those tough questions to see how they would react to the answers. And often they try to deny or to forget a lot about their past or about who they are presently. What was your first period like? How do you feel about your period? What are your stress triggers? What is your current environment like? What type of menstrual care products do you use? What types of substances do you put in or on your body? Are menstrual care products and clean water affordable and accessible where you live? To get to know who you are, I've included a questionnaire and you'll find these questions as well as other questions like these for you to use in order to assess your needs before creating your routine. Once you know who you are and you're comfortable with who you are and you know what your needs are, then you will be ready to move on to the Pope's method to creating your own personal holistic menstrual care routine, one that takes into account your unique and individual needs.